Hello everyone. And in this video, we're going to look at how we can customize the buttons in iOS 15. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, if we want to create a button control with rounded corners and we are not using iOS 15, then we have a couple of different options. Let's go ahead and do this. Now, this is not we're not going to use the new features of iOS 15. We're just going to try to see if we can round corner the button to make it work. So I'm going to say watch list, whatever the text you want to say in your button with a particular frame. I'm just going to go ahead and pass in the maximum width of 400. There we go. You can see the width is 400 now. All right. Now we can go ahead and give some sort of a foreground color also. Eventually we'll give that. So let's go ahead and first, I'm going to go ahead and set the background color. And I will use the teal color. There we go. Great. And I can go ahead and also add a bit of a padding to it. The button is looking much better now. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and say foreground color to be white because the text should be white. Now, currently, it's not really rounded. Now, if I want to do it rounded, I can go ahead and call clip shape and pass in the rounded rectangle and provide some sort of a corner radius. I'm just going to say 10 and continuous. So they're rounded. And I can go ahead and also add a padding to my VStack. So it's a little bit away from the VStack. So this is all the code that we need if we want to create a rounded rectangle button which was in iOS in iOS 13, iOS 14, whatever, but we are not using any new features of iOS 15. So now the question is okay, what should we do in iOS 15? All right, let's go ahead and make the same exact thing in iOS 15. I'm going to go ahead and start with the button. That will take in the action and the label. So that part remains the same. This is your action. This means that this is when you click the button. We are still going to use a text view inside the button as a label. Add to watch list. We are going to set the frame to be maximum width. And I can go ahead and pass in 400. Perfect. And now I can go ahead and pass in the style, which can be bordered. So this is a new thing that they have added, uh, the bordered style. As soon as I add the bordered style, you can see that now it is already rounded. If you want your button to be exactly the same as before, like with teal color, then we can do a little bit more modification. So I'm going to go ahead and say tin color, and tin color will be teal. Now, when I apply the tin color, and by the way, these properties, button style, border, tint, and all that stuff is available in iOS 15. And I have already configured my project to be, oops, let's go ahead and see again. You can already see that my project is already configured to be iOS 15 with Xcode 13. So we have applied teal to it. It's a bit, pretty much of a light color teal. Uh, I can also go ahead and apply some sort of a control size. We have a different control size. I can provide a small control size. Uh, the, right now, the text width is 400. So it doesn't really matter what I provide as a control size. It's always going to be 400. There we go. So that's a small size. We can go ahead and apply some sort of a different size now. Let's say large. You can see it's a little bit of a larger button. Pretty good, right? Now, if you want to make the same exact button as before, then I'm going to go ahead and apply the maximum width to 400. Now, one thing you will notice is that this button versus the button that we created earlier on, if I uncomment that, they are different color. The tint is teal, which we have applied using iOS 15, but it's more of a like a lighter tint color. And we can also control that in iOS 15. I can go ahead and say control prominence and I can say increased. And by doing that, basically I'm saying that this is a very important button. This is a uh, primary button in my application. And by 
providing the increased prominence, now you can see that the focus is now increased or it is more visible, all right? It is more important than maybe other buttons which have controlled prominence to be not increased, but standard, which is, by the way, default. So it's kind of up to you if you're providing increase or standard and these kind of things, all right? All right, so we have created the button. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out this one, the old one, the iOS uh, 14 one or 13 one. So one of the cool things about this button is that now this is available. I mean, it, it's gonna work with the dynamic type. It's gonna work in the light mode and the dark mode uh, and localization. So it's, it's really good that you are going to be start using these kind of things or modifiers to create the button. Now, another cool thing is that you can use these buttons not only by creating individual buttons, but you can create these buttons by creating a list of buttons and you can apply it on the whole list. So let's say that we have a list of data. So I'm going to say one till 20 and I'm going to say ID is self. It doesn't really matter what I'm displaying in the list. It's all hard coded data anyways. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say with probably edge stack text with item and the item might be saying uh, index number and now we can go ahead and add a bit of a spacer i can go ahead and add a button once again with the action uh, in this case we actually don't really care if we're doing the action or just a normal button i mean we're not really providing any action and for text i'm just going to go ahead and say add to cart Okay, so you can already see that the button is taking place. Let's go ahead and build our app and resume it. Okay, so it's a list with 20 items and each item is the edge stack which contains a text and a button. Now, if I want to apply the styles like the tin, the control size, the control prominence, I can go ahead and apply it over here, but the cool thing about these things, these styles, is that I can always use to apply on the whole list. First, let me go ahead and change the list style to be plain. There we go. And now I can go ahead and apply different styles. Like I can say over here, button style, and I can say border. Immediately when I say border, you can see all of the buttons automatically turn into these beautiful rounded corner buttons. And now it's up to me, like whatever I want to provide. So I can go ahead and say control size to be small. And a little bit smaller buttons. You can do large or regular, whatever. And then I can go ahead and provide a tint color. And I can say probably teal color or some other color. Right. And I can also provide control prominence to be increased. But I don't think it's going to look nice over here if you provide control prominent increase because control prominence with increased prominence is basically, it should be used only for the primary buttons. So if all of them have uh, kind of like an increased prominence, we are saying that we have all of these things which are equally important, all right? So one of them has to be more important than the other. So there we go, we have applied these styles over here. Now, another thing that got added into the button, let me comment this out first, is the default action. All right, so it's a pretty simple thing. So let me go ahead and give you that example. If you have a button like this one, it's a normal button. We have button style, we have tint, we have control size, we have control prominence, and the keyboard shortcut is default action. So this keyboard shortcut modifier is basically saying that if we are uh, when we're using on, on an iPhone, we can press a return key in the iPhone in the keyboard and at, it will perform the action of the button. If we were using it on an iPad, then we can hook up a external keyboard and press enter and it's going to fire again the action. And for Mac OS apps, again, we have a keyboard connected to Mac anyways. So whenever we press a return key, it's going to fire this particular action. All right. So this is, I think, pretty cool. Uh, it kind of reminds me of when you're doing web development and you are writing your form HTML element and any 
button inside the form HTML element, the default action or the default way that the button works is to submit the form. Great. All right, let's move further. Another thing that got added is in the button is something called a role modifier. So you can see that there are different roles available. Right now we have only cancel and destructive. And the role basically is going to automatically give you some sort of a look and feel for, for the button. So let me go ahead and create the button. I'm going to say delete from database. You can already see that the button is automatically turned into a red color. And I can also set the frame. If you want to set the frame, you can set the frame to be like maximum width or whatever, to be 400. If you want it to be a little bit larger, then we can do that also. Let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. Dot frame max width to be 400. Okay. And then once again, if we go ahead and apply a button style, control size, and control prominence, since this button roll is destructive, it is going to take into account that it is a destructive button, which is going to give us the red color. Okay, great. Let's move on to confirmation dialogues. So let's say that we have a button and when we press the button, we want to show some sort of a confirmation that are you sure you want to delete or these kind of things. For this, first I need to create a state. So I'm going to go over here on the top and I'm going to create a state, private var. You can call this anything. I'm just going to call it as presented right now, but you can call it anything. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a button. We can use the same button if you want. Uh, I can just go ahead and copy this guy over here. So we have the same button that you are deleting from the database or something like that. All right. In the control action or in the button action, what we're going to do is we're going to say is presented equals to true. And I can also attach a confirmation. So confirmation simply means that it is going to ask you that, hey, are you sure you want to delete? So are you sure? With the presented property will be a binding, which it is presented. And actions. Actions are basically just saying that, what do you want to display? All right. So instead of the role destructive over here, I uh, am just going to say kind of like no role because we are going to have a destructive role probably inside over here. I'm going to go ahead and say button, role, destructive, action, whatever, delete something, and then whatever the text is, delete the item. All right, let's go ahead and run this. And now if I click on the button, you can see it says, it's kind of like a confirmation is saying, hey, delete the item or cancel. If I do a cancel, then it simply goes away. If I do a delete, then it is going to fire this particular function of the destructive button. And the good thing about this confirmation dialog is that if you are using it on an iPad, it will be a popover. If you are using it on a Mac OS application, it will be an alert. So that's a, that's a pretty cool thing about this. Another thing that got added is the toggle button. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we already know about the toggle, toggle, which means that you can turn on or off. Now I have to go ahead and pretty much create another state property. And I will say is on so that we can use in the toggle. So let's go ahead and create a very basic toggle. And toggle is a slider toggle. So you can kind of like turn it on or off again. Uh, we can go ahead and pass in is on, I guess. Let's go ahead and see this one is on. And for the label, meaning whatever you want to display, uh, I'm going just going to say image. And I'm going to say over here system name. And I'm just going to say heart. So let's see what it displays when we have a toggle something like this. All right, let's go try to see if it, here we go. So we have a toggle. If I go ahead and run this, this 
creates a toggle and the label is the heart. Now in iOS 15, you can also attach a toggle style and you can say button. This means it becomes one, no slider, just a whatever the label is, and you can turn it on or off. All right, so that's a pretty cool thing that they have added also. All right, so we got the toggle. Now the next thing is a something called a control group. And control group is basically used to create multiple controls. So let me go ahead and show it to you. So we'll go ahead and create a control group somewhere. Control group. And you can put control group also in the navigation bar items. So if I create a button over here, which uh, I can simply just copy the button. Let me go ahead and copy the button, like a very simple button. There we go. So you can see that it's now a control group. Oops, let me go ahead and get it back. There we go. And if I add another button, because the whole point of control group is that you have multiple buttons inside the control group, it will be very close to the other control group or other button. All right, so you can see that now we have a control group with two different items, two buttons. And both of these items, both of these buttons, uh, since they're in the same control group, the whole point is that they, they provide very common kind of a operation. Not kind of common, but uh, maybe sharing things or maybe you're trying to add something and remove something anyway. But the if you have common functionality in your app or those uh, buttons or whatever views that are going to go as one group, you can put it inside a control group. And control group, once again, it can also go in your navigation bar. Uh, so you can put it right there also. So there you have it. Uh, these are most of the features that are for buttons in iOS 15. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have many different courses ranging from Core Data to Swift UI, RX Swift, MVVM Design Pattern for UI Kit, as well as MVVM Design Pattern in Swift UI, new course on GraphQL, Combine, Machine Learning, Flutter, and so much more. Check out the links in the YouTube description. Thank you so much, and I hope that you enjoyed the video.